Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Too. Tonight is Thursday. Can you believe it? Just that fast. We were just in church on Sunday giving God glory. And boom. Now we're here Thursday. And you know what that is? That's time for you to pull your Bible out, Bible out because it is Thursday night Bible study. Come on, get your word, get your pen, get your paper. Join me. I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nicomani, pastor of Love of Jesus Deliverance, Evangelist of Center Community Church. And we welcome you to come on in, open up the word, knowing that there's going to be something, something in the scripture that's going to meet you where you need to be met. Let's get started in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise for who you are. We thank you for yet another day, a time that we have the ability to set, a time, set aside time to study your word, to show ourselves approved so that we can rightly divide the word of God, so that when we talk to others and proclaim the gospel, we speak it with clarity, articulation, and great understanding. Father, we ask that you be in the midst that you find any type of technical difficulties, that you open up the minds, oh God, of those who are listening, give them great understanding, enlighten them, Father, in the name of Jesus as we move forward. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would go with me to the book of Second Chronicles chapter 14, and we're going to be studying specifically on this chapter tonight. Second Chronicles chapter 14, specific verses are 1 through 7. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 14, 1 through 7. I usually give you different pointers or I usually give you um, different um, checkpoints to look at in regards to um, our Bible studies. Tonight, I'm letting it a different way to specifically hone in on 2 Chronicles 14, 1 through 7, as it will identify with those who are part of the congregation of love of Jesus deliverance as we are going through our transition, as we are pro progressing, as the Lord sees fit for us to move forward in ministry as he wills us to do. And it's also going to meet those of you who are listening and tuning in wherever you may be in your life and how God is moving you and how he's leading you in a direction that may feel a little bit uncomfortable, that may feel a little different, but you are reassured that you have placed your will in his hand knowing that he has a better plan way beyond what we can think or believe even for ourselves. So on tonight, we're going to be talking basically about how God wants us to build and prosper. It is important as the people of God that we understand that God has placed each and every one of us in this world for a reason and for a purpose. And whatever we do, whatever we manage to put our attention to, we are building, we are creating something. God has given us that innate ability because of his divine nature that created us. We are a part of that. So therefore, all of us have the ability to build and we all have the ability to prosper. Now, a lot of times people look at that word prosper and they look at it in relation to monetary means. Being prosperous does not always mean money. Yes, that could be an intricate part of being prosperous, but it's not the sole reason or the sole definition of what being a prosperous person or what prosper means. So let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 14, 1 through 7. God bless you all. It's so good seeing you all tune on in. Go ahead. Press that click button, click that like button, that share button. Let others know that they're going to get something to, out of tonight's Bible study lesson. Tell them to join on in. It's not difficult. Only thing you have to do is press your share button. Even if they don't hear it right now, live in this present time, they'll be able to look at it at, it at another time. All right, let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 14, 1 through 7. And it says, so Abijah slept with his fathers, meaning that he passed. This was the former king. He passed away and they buried him in the city of David and Asa, Abijah's son, reigned in his stead. He became the king. In his days, the land was quiet 10 years. I don't know about you, but peace and quiet, when you get it, you cherish it. When you get your quiet time, because you know that some loud time is coming. And quiet in this particular uh, verse simply means that it was a time of peace. There was no war. There was no, uh, t t uh, it, it wasn't, a, it, they didn't have to deal with tumultuous times. They had a time of peace. How many know that God is going to give his people a time of peace? In this particular scripture, Asa, he was able to experience that peace 
for a decade. I am looking for God to give us a decade of peace. How many of us have been going through when 2020 hit us? Boom. It hit us like whew, a storm, <laughs> a wrecking ball. It truly hit us. And man, recovering, recuperating, we're still going through that process of pulling out of the residue of what COVID-19, how it affected our world. And so God was showing me, after this, there will be peace. I'm looking for that decade, the remainder of the day, to be a time of peace, a time of peace. Verse two says, and Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. This is something a lot of us overlook. We get so in tune to our routines, our schedules, our own plans. And sometimes we forget if those plans simply line up with the will of God. Are we doing things that are good and right in his eyes? This is something that I often say. Every good idea is not a God idea. We as believers have to make sure that we tune ourselves up to the will of God, that his principles, his statutes, that we are abiding by them. We have to look at the things that we do, the things that we take part in. Does that represent the kingdom of God in our lives? Does that allow for the glory of God to show forth to others? Or does it make them question, well, what's the difference on how you believe or how you serve God? And any person that's just commonly walking the streets, you have to always keep that in mind. Am I truly representing God? Am I truly representing myself as a disciple of a living God? Are my actions pleasing in his sight? Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength. Are we really allowing for that to occur in the things that we say and do? Are we pleasing are we doing what is good and right in the eyes of the Lord our God? Gossiping? That doesn't please God. Rumors? Hurting other people? That doesn't please God. Being prejudiced, stereotypes, uh, racism, jealousy, contention, strife, hatred, animosity, talking behind other people's back. That's not pleasing in the sight of the Lord. It's not good. And it's not right. And we should not entangle ourselves in this these types of activities. Verse 3 says, For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves. Now, what was that all about? What, what was that saying Asa did? Asa, he scanned the land and he recognized there are some things that are happening. Now, this was the tribe of Judah, right? He says some some things that are happening in the tribe of Judah just had, that just isn't right and it's not pleasing to God and we got to shut it down. They used to create high places wherein they had uh, altars and they would make sacrifice, bring in different animals, maybe even fruit. These high places where they had uh, 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 either some type of uh, graven image to represent a God to to symbolize something uh, uh, that was not true to the living God, and they would worship that idol. They would worship that statue. They would have groves where they would cut out. You could be walking down and there was grove and you, and you would see candles and or you would see um, fruit and flowers around this area that worship or honor some type of idol or graven image. All of these things he had to recognize, these strange gods, high places, he had to break these images down and he cut down the groves. Asa said, mm -mm, God's not pleased with this. And he cut it down. He stopped it. How many things have you scanned in your life and you really took an inventory to say, wait a minute, this is not pleasing to God. The music that we hear and listen to the things that we watch and we allow for ourselves to be a part of these things that cause for us not to be pleasing in the sight of God. How many of us truly take inventory of that to say, you know what? I got to cut this stuff out. I got to, I got to take this out. Mm -mm. How many of us has turned a boyfriend or a girlfriend, even a spouse into a God? You can't breathe without him. 
You have, don't get me wrong. Spouses, honor one another, love one another, but do not put your spouse in the place of God. No, we can't do that. He, he said, I will not have any other God before me, nothing before him. He's a jealous God, meaning that, okay, pay attention to the fact that I gave your life. Pay attention to the fact that I supply your every need. Pay attention to the fact that I, I protect you. Pay attention to the fact that I allowed you to see another day. Your spouse didn't do that. It was me. That's what God is saying. Just give me, give me honor. Give me reverence that I am your great creator. That's what he means. So I'm a jealous God. I don't want to have any other thing before me. That means reverence him, honor him for who he truly is, the great I am. So Asa, he made sure that those things came down. We have to look into our lives, take inventory, and we have to make sure that these things that are not of God, that we say, no, we got to cut it out. We got to stop it. You can't. You can't be entangling yourself and looking at pornography, and then you want to come to church, and then you want to, you know, stand up like it. No, pornography, no. That's pure sin. Those people that's doing all of that crazy stuff, if you hooked up and ask God to deliver you from that, because it puts images in your head that are not godly. Intercourse between a man and a woman is sacred. It's holy. It's divine. It's beautiful. It's personal. It should not be exposed to the world, to lust after, to look into, to be enticing. And that's what pornography does. You got to cut yourself out of that. That's an image. That's an image that's not godly. You got to make sure you cut that out of your lifestyle. How many of us are giving ourselves over to things we're in? We feel like, okay, I got to buy this. I got to have that. Every little item we see, you can start splurging. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. No, those things are becoming those false images, those false idols that are keeping our attention off of relating to God and drawing closer to him. Draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you, thus saith the Lord. But if we allow for materialistic things to get our attention where we're just focused on spending, it will cause for us to fall short of his glory. We got to cut these things out. Yes, just like Asa did. These strange gods, these high places. He had to break down those images and cut down those growth. We got to do the same thing with those things that are in our lives that is, that is keeping our attention and our dedication to our relationship off of God. Verse 4 said, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. Asa commanded the tribe of Judah. He said, no, 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 no. All these other things we've been given. Okay, Abijah, my father, he had us entangled in some stuff, but he recognized it. And he said, no, 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 because we have the history of our forefathers. And the kings that did right. We have the history of how God brought us out of the land of bondage and set us free. We have our history that shows us we serve a mighty God. So Abijah had to recognize and recall that. And he said, "Mm -mm, Judah, we're going to have to seek the Lord. We're going to have to come on out of it. We got to seek the Lord. Are you speaking to your household and saying, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord? That's what Joshua said. Mm Mm-mm. We're not going to be giving ourselves into carnality. We're not going to be giving ourselves into idolatry. We're not going to do that. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Are you taking on that attitude in your life, your daily walk, to let everybody know, as for me and my house, me, my temple, where I allow for the spirit of God to dwell on the inside of me, to make it known that I'm going to serve the Lord by seeking him. By seeking him. Never go anywhere as a minister of the most high God or as a disciple representing the kingdom of God and try to speak or talk if you haven't been seeking God for yourself. Because what will happen, it will, first and foremost, 
because you're trying to come up with something or you're trying to create something on your own, it's not going to reach the audience. It's not going to compel them. They're going to see right through that. See, but when you've been in the face of the Father, when you've turned your plate down, when you've been studying the Word, when you've been uh, 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 there before the Father praying, calling out to Him, Lord, speak to me, and you speak to the Lord, people know when you've been in the presence of the Lord. Remember when Moses went up to the mount and when he came back, the people said, ooh, He's been with the Lord. They saw a difference. Never go in front of others. If you have not been in the presence of God for him to speak to you, to give you the words to say, to give you a message to say, to make sure your testimony is tight and right. So when it flows through your mouth, it transforms the atmosphere. See, there's an anointing in seeking the face of the Father that when sometimes you don't even have to say anything, just your mere presence, demons will tremble because they know that you've been in the face of the Lord. That, that, that lying spirit, that sabotaging spirit, those people ever get around somebody, ooh, I can't, I don't like her, she intimidated. Because you know why? I, I cause for the demons that manipulate you to feel uncomfortable. Seek the face of the Father. When you seek the face of the Father, you're going to see differences in the places that you go. When you seek the face of the Father, you're going to see right in your household how your household is going to become an oasis. A place of prayer where you feel the Spirit of God. When you walk out those doors, you deal with all of the situations that life brings your way. When you step through your threshold because you have made your place a house of prayer, you feel at ease. You feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. A glory cloud, a glory cloud. Rest and abides in your place. When you seek the face of the Lord, you won't be intimidated by the face of those who look are looking upon you because you know that God has sent you. Remember when Jonah, he tried to flee from his assignment of speaking to the Ninevites. And when he finally answered the call, he got nervous because he looked at his faces and the spirit of God had to tell him, don't look at their faces. Don't fear their faces. Just speak the word. See, God will give you that confidence and Holy Ghost boldness that whenever it's time for you to speak, it will flow like rivers of living water. But you got to seek the face of the Lord. You got to get in your prayer closet. You got to read that word. You got to turn down that plate. Verse five, also he took away out of all the cities of Judah, the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. See, in the beginning, it said that he experienced the 10 years of quiet. When he took out those high places, when he took out those images, the kingdom became at peace. You know why? Because them, 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 them demons didn't have a place to dwell. Let me tell you something. When you clean house, ha by yasata, thank you, Lord. When you clean house and when you sweep out and when you sanctify, when you purify, when you say no more nonsense, you know what happens? Those demonic forces have to flee back to the pit of hell where they came from. See, there's a lot of noise in your house. There's a lot of noise in your head because you got to tear down the high places. You have to get rid of the false images. You got to ask God to cleanse you and come in and sweep out those things that are not like him and you'll get a place in a time of quiet peace some of y'all are looking for peace some of y'all are looking for quiet and God is saying tear down the high places get rid of the foolishness get rid of the nonsense get rid of these things that are taking your attention off of me and I'll give you peace a peace that surpasses all understanding on understanding verse 6 says and he built fenced cities in Judah for the land had rest. He had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Let me tell you something. When God gives you the opportunity to build, to restore something, to plant something, to nourish it, to grow, and you don't have any distractions around you, that's a restful time. God is going to give you a time of peace where you're going to be able to build. You're going to be able to plant seed. You're going to be able to water that seed. You're going to be able to, to nurture it, to grow. God is going to allow for that time of peace where you are able to activate without distraction the things that God is calling you to do. The Lord had given him rest. 
so that he was able to build the gates, so that he was able to bring, build a fence around the city of Judah. The land had rest. There was no war. See, it's hard to build things up. It's hard. While you warn, you, uh, you're in a time of war, you're trying to build up a security gate. It's difficult to do. See, but God, when we cleanse out, when we take those things out away that are not like him, he will give us that time to build up, to restore, to replenish so that we will not be stressed out because we're double tasked with trying to fight a war and trying to build. No, God's going to give us that season of rest. Verse seven, concluding verse, it says, therefore, he said unto Judah, let us build there these cities and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. They built and prospered. God actually gave me this message on um the 16th, August 16th. And the Lord began to speak to me and say, this is going to be a time where you're going to build and you're going to prosper. For those of you who are part of Love of Jesus Deliverance, this is a time of building and prosper. No more trying to make ends meet. No more trying to balance this and balance that. God is going to give us a rest, a restful time where, and we're going to be able to build whatever fences, whatever walls, whatever gates, whatever towers that need to be built. He's going to give us a peace and a calm. He's going to give us a time of quiet so that we can get it done. And in all that, there will not be any war. Even the mouths that try to come up against us, God is going to allow for their tongues to clothe to the top of the roof of their mouths. So we don't have to worry about anything. The only thing we have to do is make sure we tear down the high places in our lives that distract us from seeking the face of the Father. The only thing we have to do is get focused and seek God like never before. The only thing we have to do is build and prosper. Those of you who are in, in a time in your life, you, you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to work things out. Tear out the high places. Take away the false images and the false gods. Ask God to cleanse you and make you whole. Then seek his face. Lord, what should I do? You said in your word, if I honor you and if I come before you, you will direct my path. Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways and he will direct our paths. This is a time where you're not going to have to have dual opposition. You try to stay positive, but you got forces of negativity come against you and you fight and keep your joy. You got, you fight and keep your peace. The Lord said, no, this is a time of quiet and you will build and you will prosper. Say it to yourself. Say, I will build <laughs> and I will prosper. I'm speaking to you. I'm prophesying to you. You will build and you will prosper. You will have a time of quiet, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Your, the, he gives his beloved sweet rest. It's coming your way. It's yours. In all actuality, it's already there. I pray that in this season and in this time, that you do what the word says to do as this example of King Asa has been set before us in the scriptures. That you take away all of those things that are not pleasing in the sight of God so that you yourself can be good and right in the eyes of the Lord your God. So that you can have that time of quiet so that you can build and prosper so that you don't have to keep fighting forces to stay above water, but rather. God just provides that quiet that you need to get the work that you need to get finished and completed with success. Until we meet or speak again, may the blessing of the Lord continue to make you rich, adding no sorrow to it. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Walk with the King and he will walk with you. God bless you and have a good night.